hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Show Me Your Stack. Today I will be interviewing Andrew and I'm so excited to shuffle up and see what's in Andrew's RevOps tech stack today. Let's go. Hello, welcome to Show Me Your Stack. Today, I'm so excited to be interviewing Andrew. Andrew, can you tell us a little bit about um, yourself and then a little background on what you're doing and how your tech stack is evolving? Sure, thank you so much, Ashley. It's great to be here. I am a user of Supered, so maybe we'll talk about that in a few minutes, um, but just a little bit of background, I have over a decade of sales and go-to-market experience, been managing and running remote sales and business development teams since 2019. So I got used to documentation and running remote teams before the, the COVID boom. And I'm a operations focused sales leader. That's my DNA. And then um, I hired consultants to help me when I became a leader and had a really good experience with that. And so over the last three or four years, I've become a sales and go-to-market strategy consultant. I spent time at Scale Consulting. And now over the last year, I've opened up Benchmark Signal Consulting and most recently a consulting and um, service offering called Leader Leverage. Awesome. Okay. I am so excited to talk to you today. Um, I've heard so much about what you're doing in your consulting firm and everything. So I'm excited to hear um, your thoughts on everything. So let's go ahead and shuffle up and I'm going to count down um, in your poker five card draw. So let's start with your fifth card. What tech stack tool can you absolutely not live without? We're starting with documentation. The tool. So I'm going to, and, and I'm going to go you know, you asked me for a single tool, but I'm going to talk about categories. And okay. so I'm going to, I'm going to term it the documentation category. I know it's near and dear to what you all do. And the answer for the tool is A, B, G, D, anything but a Google doc. And a few of my favorites are notion, use that to run my consulting and services practice supered. If you are on HubSpot or using sales tech and tools, it's a no brainer. And then one that's near and dear to my heart is Microsoft OneNote. Back in 2019, that was our team's wiki for process documentation. And um, anytime someone would ask me a question, I'd write it up so that way I wouldn't have to keep repeating myself. I'd put looms in there and it still worked. And I just started a big consulting project and we it, it all came full, full circle where we're building out our wiki in OneNote with this client. I love that. So first of all, I feel like, um, did Matt put you up to saying anything besides Google? Because uh, I'm just kidding. Anyways. Um, no, no, no. It, you know, I, I, I was trying to figure out the acronym ABGD, anything but a word document. But yeah, I think having done about three dozen sales and go to market consulting projects and playbooks, there are so many Google Docs and Google slide decks that just collect digital shelfware and it yep. pisses me off. Yeah, it's like documentation for the sake of documentation. Um, when I came to Supered, I came from a big corporate who loved to document everything in Google Docs. So Matt had challenged me to stop documenting and, and um, move into Supered. And I've learned so much with that, with just bullet pointing, quick notes, versus writing five paragraph essays in Google to fill a Google document. So nice. I love that you're bringing this up um, in this category for like actual useful documentation. So, okay, let's move on. Normally we go to our fourth tech stack tool, but since you are um, changing it up, I love it, bringing some creativity. What is your fourth category? Okay, the fourth category this should probably be number one, but we're going to have it number four. It's a framework for writing a business case. So when you're selling a SaaS product service, you need to have your business case, your ROI justification, all these sales enablement tools. And the scary, but maybe harsh reality is that most of those assets and resources do not get used. They don't see the light of day. 
to the C-suite or to the executive team, even your ROI calculator, no one really believes those numbers. And so the way to do a case for change in a business case is a simple framework. I use an app called Fluent where I have my sales calls, my discovery scoping calls, record them, get the transcript into Fluent, Within a few seconds, I get a first draft of a one page business case. It doesn't look like a slide deck. It doesn't look like marketing materials. Right. It, my favorite framework is situation complication recommendation. And so just a few bullets or up to a page, you say, here's the current state. Here's the situation. Here's the complication. Here's the recommendation. It's vendor agnostic. And that's how that's the communication language of executives and leaders. So that's that's number four. Okay, wait, repeat that one more time. Situation. Yep, complication, complication. Recommendation. recommendation. I love that. Um, uh, at Super, we have an internal um, process that we do bullet pointing and recaps for that. And I'm definitely taking those three and integrating it into my daily recaps. Cause- Yep, a lot of times in my communication with executives at clients, mm -hmm. we skip the pleasantries in an email and I'll just say situation. Here's what's going on. Complication. Here's what's messed up recommendation. Here's one, two or three things we do about it. Stack ranked in order of what I think we should do. I love it. Awesome. Okay. What do you have for us at number three? What's our third category? Okay. So this is the tech stack, but I'm going to flip it on its head. Another remix. And we're going to say virtual assistant or an analyst. And I'm fortunate enough to have virtual assistants and executive administrators that support me and my team as we do consulting. I also have a couple of projects that are client projects that are ongoing right now where we've strategically hired interns or analysts to support the administrative work to do some of those jobs to be done that we'd love to get to that we just don't have the bandwidth or the, the resources or the capacity to get to. So going against, you know, and, and this is the best cure for tech stack overload. And honestly, I don't play with the AI tools. I have the interns or analysts or virtual assistants use the AI tools for me so that they can get the power. We can get the output of AI without me wasting my day on that. So you're telling me all of this. <laughs> The clean yep. up the solution for every idea that I am on a call that I'm like, one day I'll get to that one yep. day. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, they allow the, the interns and analysts, they have this fresh mindset, external perspective, and they can really help you to be creative and to be yeah. proactive as opposed to reactive. Right. Cause we get stuck in so much of the monotonous of like, I have to get this done. My head is solely focused on the North star of finishing this that creativity does seem to fizzle out. Um, and I think especially like Q2, Q3, I don't know about you, but I just feel like it's like a run of a marathon every year. And then, yeah, the creativity just dies. So yeah, so I, I outsource and I delegate creativity because my, I, my, I have all these ideas in my head, but to actually get them done, it, it doesn't make sense. So you bring on interns, analysts, virtual assistants, and they can actually give you more capacity to, to be creative. I love that. All right, what do you have for me at number uh, four? Okay, number four, gratitude and gifting. So I implement these some of these tools with current clients that I'm working with, whether it's new business sales teams, whether it's account management teams and other folks that are working throughout the funnel. There's a couple of different channels that are used. There's phone calls, there's LinkedIn, there's email, and then a fourth channel that I like to introduce is gratitude or gifting. And there's a few vendors. Thanks is the, the go-to one that my consulting firm works with, but there's Sendoso. There are uh, quite a few other ones and you just want to be thoughtful. Listen to your customers, listen to your partners and your leads, hear what they like, hear what they're interested in. And then if you send them a gift, a book, um, a, a meal from a local spot that they're interested in, then it really goes a long way. So I like to operation. I like to, you know, really nail that down and make it a part of the process. I 
love this. I think this is something that has um, kind of fallen away off the, you know, and I think a lot of it has been replaced by tech stack tools and especially CRMs where you're automating these things, but sending a handwritten thank you note and things like that. Like, so my mom is an advocate. Like you give her a gift or she gives you a gift, you better write a thank you note or you will never see another gift from her. Like my, I'm, we literally make my four year old color out thank you notes to grandma. But honestly, it's kind of a dying art that goes such a long way versus automated emails that's like, thank you for signing up, that just feel so stale. And with all the new buying patterns out there that are like human interaction, like people where money is so tight and tech money is so hard to come by right now, people are buying based on humans. And yeah. so coming back into that human interaction. And then I love the keeping your mentor list up to date and things like that. Um, for me, that's been a huge asset in my life is having those solid mentors. And I haven't heard that. This is my ninth episode and nobody has talked about human interaction. So I'm oh, so wow. happy you brought this up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, so it's so it's interesting. The handwritten thank you cards and stationery, just like going that extra extra couple steps. And I've done a few private newsletters, monthly updates to, to my advisors. I just send it out as a, a BCC. Maybe I'll develop the chops to make it into a newsletter, but people, people like to help. I love that. All right. Okay. That was your number two category. What do you have for us at number one? This All is right. your ace. What is your so ace? This is, this is crazy. You know, I, I need to play by the rules in some ways. I ha I wrote down six categories. So I need to do honorable mention is Canva or digital whiteboarding tools. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's valuable. Like 70% of the world is visual thinkers. Like definitely use that to, to get your points across and your process documentation, but totally. that's not it. Number one is notepads. And so this is way more effective than any AI tool. Uh, I have a notepad here. It's about the same size as my phone. If I'm meeting with someone, try to ha jot down notes in a notepad. I have, there you go. I got index cards. This is my best AI productivity system is, you have an index card for every day. I have other notebooks. I borrowed this one from my wife. I don't even know. It says I'm working. Um, this is a, a notepad here. And then I, I have more notepads here. This has I'm, some turtles on it. I, so like, yeah, you don't, you don't even want to see the rest of my, my office. There's, there's more notepads. There's post-it notes up there. There's a, a big ass calendar. So it's just like writing stuff down. I love that. Um, again, like I feel like everyone was so focused on AI and things like that, that I, I'm with you. I am a true post-it note and write down. Like, I just want to crinkle up my tasks and then like, I don't know if you can yeah, see Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It's very it's rewarding. Cool. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you need you need a, a basketball hoop to like, yeah, to, to process it and then, and then get rid of it, archive totally. it. I love it. Okay, let's go ahead and recap really quick. So coming in at five, we have documentation. Coming in at number four, we have a uh, framework. Coming in at number three, we have virtual assistant, intern, analyst category. Um, number two, gratitude and gifting. And at number one, we just talked about notepads. And then we have this 1.5 honorable mention of whiteboarding and Canva tools. Okay. I love that. Um, what would be your wish list tool? So you have all the VC money in the world. What do you create? Or for you, what is your category? Wow, the category. This is a, this is a wild card. Um, I think I would like an AI tool to be able to digitize all the notes that I take that are sprawled across my, my office and to put them on the digital whiteboard and then to help to prioritize, to actually help get them done, to get them delegated to my interns and analysts because there's definitely a lot of stuff that I'm jotting down but not following through on. So we'll, we'll tie everything together. I love that. That's awesome. I have tried some of the like the water notebooks like in the yeah. microwave and stuff and I'm like, it's just too weird. So yep. I hear you there. Um, awesome. Well, Andrew, it was so fun to talk to you. I love that you brought a different, um, slice to this really fun, excited to see what you do. So 
Thank you for joining. Check Andrew out on LinkedIn. Um, when the podcast airs, we'll attach it to a super card with your LinkedIn and then our listeners can find you. Great. We'll have a special offer for leader leverage consulting. What we do is we work with revenue leaders, help them unlock, go to market leverage. We do a rapid audit, 10 hour audit. What do we audit on? We give them change management insurance. They take their three big bets, their three big priorities, and you get an external expert's perspective on what's going well, how we can help to help you deliver on effective change management for your big bets. Awesome. I love that. Okay. Well, um, thank you for being here and I'm excited to, um, keep following you on LinkedIn and keep watching you grow. All right. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks everyone. Let's shuffle up and show me your tech stack where every episode is a high stakes reveal of the tools that are aces in our guest book where chips are down and digital decks are on the table. Are you ready for the best in class tech? Let's deal these cards and see what comes up. Who's ready to double down on digital innovation with me?